from Claire Pearsall, who joins us live from Kent. She is a political commentator. Thank you so much for being with us on the program, Claire. Now, Braverman received a lot of backlash following her comments on that pro-Palestine uh, protest, particularly her comments regarding the police force. Uh, but many say, as our correspondent mentioned there, that this was going to happen sooner or later. Yes, I do think it was inevitable that Suella Braverman leaves her position and is sacked by the Prime Minister. We have seen a raft of headlines dating from Thursday of last week. She has dominated the news agenda across the weekend. And I think the Prime Minister didn't want that to continue for another week. You cannot have one of your most senior cabinet colleagues disrespecting the line of the Prime Minister, not running past him the words that she put out there in the national newspaper, or even if she did, she didn't make the amendments which he demanded. So that kind of behaviour leads you to believe that she is not a team player. You are not using collective responsibility, which is a very big thing for government in the United Kingdom. And I think that it was the only action that Rishi Sunak could have taken. Right. And we're now seeing James cleverly replace her being the Home Secretary. And in his initial remarks, he did mention that uh, the safety of every single Brit will be his top priority moving forward. How do you think he'll take on the role? He is a much more conciliatory MP. He will reach out to all sides of the Conservative Party. And I do think that uh, he needs to look at the police force and how they deal with these protests uh, going forward. Because I think there have been some instances where the police have not dealt with uh, different protests fairly. They have not applied the law in the correct manner. And that really does need to stop. And I think we saw across this weekend the language of the now former Home Secretary, which has ignited a row between those on uh, the right-hand side of the political spectrum and those who are supportive of the Palestinian cause. And they came together and clashed over that. So I think that James Cleverly has a really tough job ahead of him, but he is much more thoughtful in the tone that he uses. And he will be very collegiate with the prime minister and will look to bring forward any changes in a really robust but also fair manner working with the prime minister and not against him. And David Cameron, a new but uh, for sure familiar name uh, that's now part of the cabinet. Were you surprised to see the former prime minister given that role? And do you think that it's going to hurt or help the Tories in their bid to re-election? I must admit, I nearly fell off my chair this morning when I saw that David Cameron was once again walking through the doors of, of number 10 and had been offered the job of foreign secretary. Nobody saw that coming. I think it's a very clever appointment. I think that he brings with him vast experience on the international stage. He is a very good politician. And I, I do think that we need that at the moment. We need a little bit of stability. We need the strength that he brings and hopefully for the party to come together. Now, the Conservative Party has been split and fractured in so many ways over the last four or five years that a little bit of unity is going to go a long way once we're heading into a general election. Right. And uh, circling back to the situation in Gaza, the UK is a close ally to the Israel to Israel, as we know, uh, and like the U.S., they have not yet called for a ceasefire, despite the mounting pressure that they've been receiving from the public. How much influence do you think these protests are having or are going to have on the government's approach to the matter? It's very hard to say. This is a, a situation where the United Kingdom has quite rightly stepped to one side. It is not for the United Kingdom to demand what happens within the Middle East. But I do think that we need to look at the humanitarian situation within Gaza, which, looking at your coverage recently, is uh, particularly awful. There are horrendous images coming out, likewise on the Israeli side. So I think the matter of a ceasefire 
uh, is very difficult for the United Kingdom to, to come down onto one side. But I do think we need to look further at humanitarian aid, looking at what we can do as a country to assist anybody in need. And I hope that with David Cameron now on board as Foreign Secretary, we may well get a, a slightly more balanced mm -hmm. view of what is happening within that region. All right, Claire Parasol, thank you so much for being with us here on the News Hour and sharing that analysis with us. We appreciate it.